we came here yesterday uh, from Dominican Republic and uh, uh, we knew that we're not going to see a pretty beach and uh, uh, hotels and whatnot, but uh, what we've seen was quite uh, devastating. Uh, the, the houses are, are gone, some of them, I mean the roofs definitely are gone and uh, the boats flipped over on the, on the side of the road like you see uh, uh, behind us. We have Fritz here. Uh, he's our uh, local friend. He's uh, lived in St. Martin for many, many years, even though he's uh, originally from Holland. Um, he's also a local doctor, so he's been here on the scene and uh, just a few days after the hurricane. So, night number three, on the way from DR, Dominican Republic, to St. Martin. And this is night number one, we had some thunderstorms. Night number two was really nice. And night, num night number three, here we are. Uh, we just uh, made, changed course a little bit to the right. Uh, we're heading pretty much directly upwind, so uh, we we're hoping that those thunderstorms are moving exactly with the wind, and they're moving almost exactly with the wind, just slightly more to the north. So we chose to uh, go south of it, and uh, I can't imagine sailing without the radar. It'd be nerve-wracking, uh, especially that one of those clouds is obviously uh, a little bit uh, not happy, and it's producing some thunder, so we want to stay away from it. But once we clear that, um, this is a 24-mile range, uh, we seem to have just two more scattered things so that hopefully we can get around and start heading uh, uh, north, west, northeast towards St. Martin. Thunderstorms tonight are nicely evenly spaced out 24 miles so that puts them right on the edge of the screen as soon as I miss, as soon as I manage to miss one I see another one right at the edge of the screen so so much for sleeping. Beautiful sunlight, it's time to sleep. So we're inevitably getting closer to St. Martin. Um, actually starting to pick up some range, but uh, on cell phone, but we're still using satellite to communicate with Anya, and Anya has been doing some really good work for us, because normally we know what to do in St. Martin, but uh, after the hurricane, a lot of things are non-existent or shut down um, they're recovering apparently the marina in Marigo Bay here let me show you this in this uh, uh, bay it's the most protected bay especially with the wind that just turned south um, so we want to go there instead of Simpson Bay and apparently the customs are a lot less formal and nicer over there this thank god is not a thunderstorm it's actually st martin about two hours to go everybody's really excited uh, because we've been at sea for almost three days um, bucking the wind and the current and it has not been pleasant we're getting close to st martin so time to look like human being hence the that Julian is, as usual, confusing the uh, hose with the salt water and the fresh water. In the meantime, on the way, I guess apparently we got a little water leak. Not a whole lot, but some. Um, I found the source of it. It's that check valve. I already know them. I already had one problem with this check valve. Uh, see? It's leaking it's a it's the valve that's supposed to keep the uh, water going from the bilge pump outside 
and keep it from coming back. And it's actually not just not keeping it from coming back, but it's also leaking by itself. So a quick fix for this, I kind of figured would be to raise the water pump above the water line. The water line is right around here, right around here. So if we raise it over here, then we're still gonna have a little bit of a leak of, from the check valve, but at least it's not gonna be leaking through the, through the, um, uh, through the bilge pump. I'm just gonna do a little quickie on it, and then I'm gonna dig up a new check valve and change it. But for now, I figured something like this should do. You're gonna love this. Of course, that is a sort of a dangerous proposition because now we no longer have an automatic build pump here. So we have to monitor if there is no other leaks in the meantime. And we can soak up all the remaining water that I already soaked up. But not a whole lot, but some. There we go. And I'll fix it when we're on anchor in probably like something like an hour. Flying fish courtesy of the ocean for breakfast. Watch this. Kuba redesigned the uh, vacuum cleaner. I think it's a lot easier to vacuum right now because, you know, it's nicer to handle, right? And also it's totally environmentally friendly. It doesn't spit out anything. See, whatever it, com whatever it uh, comes out of it, it goes back in there. So I, I think he's got a good idea. We just made it to St. Martin and it's pretty damn scary. Uh, I will do close-ups later, but uh, you can see boats stranded on the shore and basically most of the roofs missing most of the windows blown out it's pretty crazy given it's already two months after the hurricane so anyway i'm going to take a closer look we'll let you know This is what's, honey, this is what's left of our favorite restaurants. Uh, Fritz, what, uh, what did you see? What, what have you experienced? What, uh, how bad was this hurricane comparing to a few other ones that you've dealt with before? Well, it was uh, a very serious uh, uh, damage and serious bad impact on the island and uh, we had in 95 we had uh, hurricane lewis which was also a bad one but uh, at that stage actually we uh, were not as well prepared for hurricanes uh, there's more houses with concrete roofs here and the electricity is uh, especially on the dutch side parts of the dutch side is under the ground so the recovery after this hurricane was a little bit faster although the the hurricane itself was much stronger than uh, Lewis and there was more, more devastation. But the first initial recovery here was going pretty good. But now uh, somehow due to all the political problems and the si political situation, it is stagnating. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not the, much happening. Just, just to tell everybody, the, uh, the, the Dutch side is effectively independent at this point, right? It's, it's yeah, no it's, it's part of the kingdom, but it's independent. Uh, right, and the franchise is still it's, France. It rules itself effectively. Yes, yeah. At this point, and but the franchise uh, is still French, French, and it's still French. So mm -hmm. the French can do whatever they want, and so also they don't have to uh, 
ask permission to come here. But for example, the Dutch, when uh, they arrived here to help, they had to ask permission from our lieutenant governor and from our prime minister to really come ashore with the Marines mm -hmm. and to really start uh, helping the people, but also to stop the looters from uh, uh, going into the houses and the shops. Uh. Right, when I spoke with Denkes Denka, she, she said that the, one of the biggest problems right in the beginning, yes. right after the hurricane, was actually the looting and pretty much lawlessness, not, not, uh, yeah. not as much of a damage, at least to some houses. Yeah. Well, the, 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 of course, the damage was it's done, but there were still quite yeah. some warehouses and shops were in order. Intact, But yeah. then uh, already during the storm, people came to, to already break in and loot. And so that has done a lot of damage to uh, uh, important businesses here mm -hmm. on the island mm -hmm. which uh, uh, which is our main income of course uh, uh, in the hotels uh, uh, the tourism, tourism and the yachting uh, exactly industry. and if you damage yeah. uh, so important stores that bring in the, the stuff then uh, and they're not opening now because mm -hmm. of all the looting that they are so uh, so without uh, any uh, money and income and they don't really want to start again so uh, that's very bad for the island And another thing is also uh, the, the long-term impact because as we see over here, I mean, most of the hotels are completely destroyed. Yes. I mean, uh, this is not a few weeks worth of repair. We were talking about some, some places recovering for years before they're going to be reopened, correct? Yeah, for sure. And, so that's, and that's for an island that lives from tourism is very bad. It's amazing. And of course, our airport is, was very badly damaged. So uh, it's, it's impossible to have flights coming in, uh, normal flights with, uh, with tourists. Mm -hmm. And uh, so only the Marines, the Marine planes could come in. And then we had emergency flights picking people up to bring them away from the island. Mm -hmm. And uh, so and so the island has a lot less people at the moment, which is good because, yeah, there was for a long time, there was no food. Right. So there was a lot less m mouses to feed. So that was good in the beginning. And then, uh, of course, the, the help started slowly to come in. But yeah, the other problem was after Hurricane Irma, we had Hurricane Jose coming. So people here were already getting scared. So it went just north, so we didn't have much impact mm -hmm. on that. But there was a lot of rain. For people with no roofs, of course, the houses, the people that were even living in the, in the bottom parts in the houses, got rained on because there was no roof on the right. top floors. Right. And after Jose, then Maria came, which was also a Category 5, two weeks later. And that luckily passed us quite okay. I mean, mm -hmm. we had still tropical force winds, but that devastated uh, the BVI and St. Thomas. Again. So, again. Well, they didn't have much damage much from, from Irma, Irma okay. but they had really major damage, major damage from, from, uh, Maria. from Maria. Mm -hmm. So now we have all these three islands, which were really tourist destinations in the Caribbean that are not able to receive out any of, Out tourists. of order, effectively. Yeah, out of order. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a great impact on the Caribbean. Uh, I think on uh, tourism from Europe and uh, in the States, it's, uh, it's yeah, we just, quite uh, something. We just had friends fly in, apparently, the, fur the very first long-haul flight from, from uh, Amsterdam. Yeah, so that's on, two months later. Vietnam. That's two months later, yeah. yeah. And still the airport is not really ready. Oh. Correct. Uh, it's still, it's as I understand, there's quite a temporary solutions there yes. in order to even yeah. receive people and receive airplanes. Yeah. So mass tourism, mass flights coming in, like we, we used to have Air, Air France, you, uh, it's uh, gonna take years, American probably. Airlines, uh, you name it, everybody would, would come in in one day and there would be thousands of tourists. It's impossible. And that's going to be for a while. Mm -hmm. That will take a while before that get back. Well, yeah. since you're... Since you're local here, I wish you all the best and I wish you quick recovery. Yeah. And we're hoping for the best for you. Thank yeah, you thank very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. Fred. Thanks for coming as a tourist here because <laughs> of we, course. Need any, we need of any course, tourist to help. Course. So of course. Go shopping and. Uh, <laughs> Will do. Next thing is. <laughs> ice any money you leave behind is good for our economy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll gladly do so. Yeah, right. <laughs> thank you, Fred. Okay. Appreciate it. <laughs>
Os segredos vêm da floresta de luz pra te amar, pra te amar. Abre a consciência dos seus filhos a crescer.